Welcome to the Pirate Broadcast, where we interview interesting people doing interesting things, where you can expand your connections, your community. Kindness is cool and smiles are free. And let's get this party started. Hey, welcome aboard, Pirates, and thank you so much for joining us. If you're joining this broadcast in the future, if you're listening to it on another platform or whatever platform you choose to to consume your content on, welcome aboard. Today we have John Jantz from Duct Tape Marketing fame, and uh, we're going to be talking about a new book that he's uh, going to be releasing here shortly, and just life in general and some of the things that your business needs to know about in the marketing, media, and content creation world. So welcome, John. How are you doing today? I'm just great. It's uh, um, I'm in uh, mountain time zone, so while we're recording this, it's bright and early for me at least. Well, I'm, I'm in Arizona, so it's Pacific Standard Time <laughs> since we don't change our Whatever time Whatever that zones. means. I don't know what time it is in Arizona ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, right now it's Pacific Standard Time. Um, and the reality is, is that you know, we're up and off and we're going and we're starting the, the day. And one of the things that I want to make sure that I have um, at least highlight is I got to know you through your book, Duct Tape Marketing. Yeah. And it was one of those uh, adventures that just really, I thought it nailed it. You know, it was very simple, clear cut, concise. And I want to go back to the backstory and how you got into marketing, how you got into media and and what was the what was the seed that got planted in in your life that uh, got you down this path? Well, I won't go back to second grade or anything, <laughs> but uh, it is a long story. <laughs> I've actually owned my own marketing consulting firm for a little over 30 years now. Um, I got out of college, went to work for an ad agency for about five years. And you know, after about five years, I thought, well, any dummy can run a business. How hard could it be? <laughs> How <laughs> hard could it be? So, so I, you know, no plan at all, of course. I knew I could hustle work. And so that's pretty much what I did in the beginning. I hustled projects from friends, you know, network, um, people I knew, big projects, little projects, big companies, little companies, didn't really matter. Uh, I was, you know, essentially making it up as I was going. Uh, but somewhere along the line, I, I landed a couple of small business clients that really just, they didn't have marketing. They didn't have a marketing person. <laughs> you know, they, they they saw me as kind of their marketing department. Uh, yeah. It's kind of trendy now to call it fractional CMO. I guess that's what <laughs> I guess that's what I was uh, for them. But I also found it really tough. I mean, it was a hard model to price. It was like, you know, they would take 60 hours a week if you'd give it to them because that's what they needed. Um, and so in the traditional fashion, I, you know, they, they didn't have the same budgets or even attention spans. So I thought one day, you know, what I need to do is create a way where I can walk into small businesses. I want to work with small businesses, but they're really frustrating. Uh, so I, I had to create a way where I could walk in and say, look, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what you're going to do. <laughs> here's the results we hope to get. And by the way, here's what it costs. Um, mm -hmm. And boy, like the first three times I, that came out of my mouth, they said, where do I sign? And I was like, well, maybe I'm onto something here yeah. because what, what, what I was trying to do was solve my frustration. And I think what I did is tapped into still what is today uh, one of the greatest frustrations with small businesses. It's actually, as a small business owner, hard to buy marketing services. And it's gotten harder. I mean, everybody's selling the new thing, the new tactic, the idea of the week, a piece of the puzzle. And it's really frustrating and overwhelming for a small business owner who just wants to go out there and, and do the work that they love to do to figure this marketing stuff out. So this idea of somebody walking in and saying, look, I'm going to install a marketing system and you're going to know what it costs was kind of music to their ears. I, I, you know, that was really the basis of what I started writing about. Yeah. Um, duct tape marketing came out in 2006. Can you believe that <laughs> long ago? Um, and it really was a distillation of this idea that marketing is a system that starts with strategy before tactics. And if you nail that part, uh, really the tactics that come along that are going to be new, the platforms that come along won't really matter so much as long as you've got the right point of view about what you're trying to do. Uh, you know, that writing that I was doing, the book itself started attracting other independent marketing consultants and agencies. And so uh, today we have, uh, uh, in addition to uh, the writing that I do, um, we have an agency uh, that, that does work with small business uh, clients uh, installing the duct tape marketing system. And I've got a network of about 150 independent marketing consultants and agencies around the world who license our methodology and frankly, 
train and collaborate <laughs> together as as much as uh, as anything. Um, so we're installing the duct tape marketing system on any given day in thousands of small businesses around the world now. Wow, you know that's inspirational because I've been in and out of advertising for decades, and I I started in uh, outdoor advertising. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the small business model is completely different. And yeah. like you said, one of the things that they struggle with is just making sure they have the right amount of, you know, support, making sure that they're not spending so much and not getting the results. And, you know, how much do I need and what, what, where do I need to grow it? And content marketing comes out and then, right. you know, I need a blog and I need a website. And I know you've, you've had this experience where we went through this process of, I don't need a website because that's not where my customers are. <laughs> and then I don't need email because that's not what, what my customers are using. And now we're in this arena where I don't need, I don't need social because that's not where my customers right. are. Yeah. <laughs> and so what do you, what do you think about that process or that mindset? And yeah. That, well, well, I've certainly faced it all because I really, you know, we work with the traditional, you know, real small businesses is what I like to call them. Um, and, and certainly, uh, they are inherently behind the curve in, in the digital space. And so a lot of my, you know, the reason I came up with duct tape marketing as, as a metaphor and a name is that, uh, I want to take the overwhelm. I want to take the mystery out of, I want to take the hype out of it and just say, look, Twitter is stupid. You're right. <laughs> but here is a way that you can use one aspect of it to help grow your business. You know, what are the ways that you can use any of these new tools, any of these new platforms to enhance the relationships you already have? If you start looking at them that way instead of, oh, this is the new hot place, you know, for me to find, you know, 60-year-olds, yeah. you know, on TikTok um, yeah. you know, or something. I mean, it, it's... Um, it's that mindset that I've had. And I think if you if you keep that kind of mindset, you really can then use that as a lens to look at any new tool um, as opposed to saying, oh, here's what everybody else is doing. I guess that's you know what I need to do or not do. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you know, I don't need to chase the new the the next shiny tool. I need to make sure that the tools I'm using are doing what I need done. I mean, we spend, I, I frankly, uh, Russ, spend more time telling people what not to do than what to do uh, because mm -hmm. because they, it really is easy to taste, chase, you know, the, the shiny new thing. And what I'd like them to do is actually figure out who their best clients are and, and figure out how to do more with them. Um, and that doesn't require TikTok or, or Clubhouse or whatever it is. And I'm not saying that those tools wouldn't necessarily apply to certain instances, but but the real focus ought to be on how can we do more with what we've already got? Um, yeah. uh, because I guarantee you, experience tells me, it's the only reason I can speak so strongly to this point, that 20% of your clients would like to do 10 times the amount of business with you, and 20% of those people would like to do 100 times more uh, business with you if you would figure out how to blow them away. Um, and, and if you spent your time there, figuring out how to create a better experience, figuring out how to actually help them go from where they are today to where they want to be, uh, you won't have to look for any new business. Mm. So how, how, can we, how can we think about this process? Because what you're talking about is really important, and I want to make sure that we share this, sure. is how do you convert the marketing efforts and in, in attempt to convert that into a customer experience. Sure. So because that's that's yeah. so important. Yeah, absolutely. And everybody talks about it. Um, yeah. again, it, it, you're right. It's it's for some people it seems to be a mystery. What you need to start with is what is your first off, you need to I'm going to back up before customer experience like who is your ideal client? I mean, who uh, who do you get most of your profit with? Um, who mm -hmm. who has the right problem that you actually solve like nobody else? Mm -hmm. um, who can you actually add value to? If you start looking at those, you know, kind of a clients, what are the characteristics about them? Where are they? What you know? What problem are you solving for them? That's really step one for us. But then you have to think in terms of an entire uh, customer journey. You know, uh, it was very fashionable, still pretty fashionable in marketing circles to talk about a marketing funnel. Um, and, and the problem with that is, of course, is, is so focused on getting the click, on getting the eyeball, on getting the sale, and then it's like, done. <laughs> and yeah. so for, for us, the marketing journey uh, has always been an hourglass uh, metaphor or shape. 
Yes, mm. the funnel aspect of finding people, eventually getting some portion of those people filtered because they're the right people, uh, getting them to, to have enough trust so that they're willing to get out their wallet um, and exchange money for what you're going to provide for them. But then uh, it becomes to try, buy, repeat, and refer for us. So the second half is, is really where the funnel then, if you think about it upside down, uh, expands again. And if you simply look at those, those I'll, I'll repeat them again, those seven stages of no like, trust, try, buy, repeat, and refer. And you start filling up each of those stages with processes, with content for the right stage or for the right point or questions that they have at each of those stages. If you just start building your entire business, your entire marketing around filling those stages, um, you're going to create a much more complete customer journey. So to your real question, once somebody becomes a buyer, I mean, in that stage, what is the, what's the transaction look like? Yeah. First off, is it pleasant? Uh, because that's the first place people start dropping the ball. Uh, what's the new customer uh, experience or orientation or onboarding or whatever you call it look like? What's the uh, process to actually review results with them so that you can show them that they're actually getting uh, the results? What's your communication rhythm look like? Probably the biggest complaint I hear with marketing companies is they do a good job of selling the thing. Maybe they even do a good job of doing the work, but the client doesn't really know what's going on. Or they get these emailed reports that talk about how many hits they've got. You know, it's like, <laughs> what, what does that mean or do for me? Um, and, and the Please best, translate this for me. <laughs> well, or, or just make it mean something that is a value. What, you know, is that a benefit? I don't know. <laughs> Did that get me any business? I don't know. Um, and so the companies that, that, that are really good at communicating, not only expectations, but results, you know, that's part of the customer journey. And then, of course, having pre-built processes and campaigns for here's what else we could do for you. Or if nothing else, a process to discover <laughs> what else we could possibly do for you. And then my favorite, in fact, I wrote an entire book about it, uh, having processes that, uh, that, 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 that intentionally turn that love for you, you know, into referrals or into advocacy um, as, as a final stage. So if you build that kind of complete end-to-end -end customer journey, um, you are going to not only attract the right ideal customer, you are going to uh, generate, um, you know, leads, frankly, from your uh, complete customer journey. Mm, I love that. You know, and and this isn't your first day at the rodeo. So, you know, you've had enough experience, you've had enough exposure to these con conversations, both on the business side and the agency side, because I know one of your models is helping a lot of agencies yeah. owners, yeah. Yeah. you know, improve their process and get right. this out and, and moving forward. And uh, so I applaud you for that. Thank I want to, I want to give a shout out to some of the individuals we got joining us here, John, if you don't mind, of course not, you know, no. and, 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 and everyone, if you're joining us live and you have questions for John or you have questions or statements or you want to shout out a few things, let us know. We have Marsha Reese. Marsha Reese, uh, John, uh, was actually the originator of the original uh, Sidewalk Chalk. So oh, wow. She's an awesome individual. She's actually on Amazon now. She's she's uh, promoting a product that, that uh, Stay Well Copper. So and hi and out of Houston, hi fellow pirates, especially Marsha. Mar and Marsha says, I want to humbly thank all the pirate nation who reached out and kind message yesterday as I was released from Amazon prison. <laughs> what a 10, ten month journey. Thanks to all of you encouraged and support along the way. You're an amazing group. Thank you so much, Marsha. Really appreciate you and look forward to next steps. Kathy Spooner, good morning, pirates. Marcia says, right back at you, Hyatt. One amazing pirate. Um, Hyatt says, congratulations. Now let's take it to the next level. Absolutely. <laughs> Howard Kaufman, who is an awesome individual that uh, he he has uh, the product ORL. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's an amazing mouth care product. Uh, I've learned the need to effectively map any marketing app back to your strategy, even if the concept and the execution are correct. You have to ask yourself, can the resources, can you resource it too? So it, <laughs> we all, we all have busy lives and uh, yes, hi at next level on steroids. Yes. Sarathi's here. Thank you, Sarathi. Hi, Russ and John. Also everyone in the space. How is it going? It's going well. 
We got Elise in from South Africa. Good morning, Pirates. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for being here. Kathy Spooner says, yes, taking notes. Great info for beginners. Absolutely. John is an absolute golden nugget of knowledge. And if you haven't purchased any of his books or any of his material, please go out and, and learn more about John. He's an individual that uh, just has a wealth of knowledge that you can learn from. So, John... I want to I want to talk about the next chapter. You you you're you're going to be releasing a new book here, and I want I want to make sure that we touch base on this before yeah. we before we get away too far on a subject. Sure. So uh, in September of uh, 2021. So those of you live, obviously, it's available for pre order or whenever you're listening to this. If it's after September 2021, <laughs> it'll be available anywhere you buy books. I actually, for those of you on camera, if I can do this right, it's so hard over backwards. But up here in the uh, uh, this little blue book uh, is the what what us authors call advanced reader copies uh, that the publisher puts out. Uh, so I do have at least a visual for you. It's called the Ultimate Marketing Engine. Five Steps to Ridiculously Consistent Growth. Uh, this book, in some ways, is uh, a, a little bit of a compilation of my 30 years of work, but also an evolution of duct tape marketing, the referral engine, SEO for growth, some of my other books. Um, uh -huh. It's really an evolution of my thinking kind of brought into one. I, I will say that I signed the contract, Russ, for this book um, with my publisher, uh, Harper Collins, um, in March of 2020. Anybody remember what they were doing in March yeah. of 2020? <laughs> and I was like, oh boy, what am I going to write about now? <laughs> um, and I certainly didn't want to write a how to market in the time of COVID. Nobody wants that book. <laughs> no. At least I hope they don't. <laughs> uh, but there's no question that what I saw going on then uh, colored some of what ended up in this book. One of the things that really struck me uh, amongst my clients, uh, some, some were in tough shape just by being in the wrong place, the wrong time, the wrong industry. But I also saw a lot of my clients thrive during this period. And it wasn't just because, uh, you know, p the demand for what they did happened to, you know, take a, a you know, fortunate uptick. It was that they got closer to their customers. Their customers wanted them to survive. And I mean, uh, this has always been true, uh, but I think the the pandemic and the tough times of 2020 really shown a very bright light on uh, the the companies that that really thrive are ones that are that that mean something in the lives of their customers. Um, right. And that idea, um, you know, really, really. Um, informed a lot of what's in this book. Uh, probably the the most innovative um, new idea, I suppose, in this book is something that I uh, sort of accidentally have been working on for 30 years. I didn't realize, but I'm, I'm such a systems thinker that, that everything I do is kind of systems. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm introducing something I call the customer success track. And it's something that that I've developed over the years that we had so many customers that that came to us in as we started talking about early on. Their website was non-existent, or you know, it was a one-page site. They had no content. You know, SEO was something that they didn't understand, or or had paid a bunch of money for and got nothing for it. Um, and so, a lot of businesses that we work with come to us in what I call foundational stage. I mean, they have those foundational needs uh, from mm -hmm. their marketing, particularly when it comes to to the digital landscape. Um, but as we worked with somebody, you know, then it was time for lead generation because now we fixed uh, those gaps. And then it was time to scale and take it to the next level. And I realized uh, over time in trial and error that, 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 that we had stages uh, that we worked with businesses in. And those stages had certainly characteristics. Uh, mm -hmm. Those stages had their own challenges when they were in that stage. If you don't have a website, it's very hard today to generate you know, leads, particularly for local businesses. Um, and and that, that if we could move somebody from stage one to stage two, that there was a promise uh, that went along with that. We could now generate business and advertising would now be effective, for example. And, and so in order to, to do that systematically and repeatably, um, we developed then milestones and tasks for each stage. And, and so we were able to say, do they have this? Have they done this? Yes or no? <laughs> uh, if the answer is no, here's the task. Um, and, and what I came to realize uh, as I transfer that sort of knowledge to a whole network of consultants is that really any business can do that. You know, what if we built our businesses to think of our customers more as members? And I don't mean a membership model. I mean, that, that can be a good model. But I'm talking more about the point of view that, that our whole goal is to not create a transaction, but is to create a transformation. That, that we figure out where our businesses, where our customers are today and where they want to be. 
and we build our entire business. We build this customer success track, but we also build our new offerings. We build um, all of our uh, ways in which we work with our customers based, based on that being our mission. <laughs> um, and, and what I found is that companies that can embrace this idea, it, it completely became a strategy for them. Yes, it became a great tactic internally, but it also became uh, their mission. It became how they trained. It became how they documented systems. It became how they uh, hired actually were for people that had that mindset. And so I really think that, that there's a lot of marketing tactics in this book, but if I can get the world to embrace this idea as customers, as members, um, mm -hmm. I think the world of small business is going to be a, a, a much more joyful place. I think I, I love that idea and the concept because once you have, you know, it's like Kevin Kelly's a thousand true fans right. concept. It's right. It's really about how you can get people together in a community. And I'm, I'm a huge fan of community, you know, pirate nation, you see right. yep. some of the, the people that have joined here yep. and it's really about how can I serve the, the, the individuals in this community to the best of my ability with the products I have, the services I deliver and some of the things that I can help them solve in their world. And I think it's so important for business owners to think about what problem do I solve and how do I communicate that? Because I mean, <laughs> you know, as a marketing individual, you know what it's like, okay, nail your niche, nail right. your message, make sure that you're communicating to the right people with the right message. So the expectations are in place. Yeah. And that's not always, I mean, it's simple, but not easy. And, and so, as marketers, we have to learn how to market ourselves and, and, uh, you know, business owners across all levels have to learn that process. And yeah. one of the entire steps of this book, it's five steps. One of the steps is, is all about, you know, figuring out the problem you really solve. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, I sell essentially when it comes down to it, I sell marketing strategy, but nobody ever wakes up and says, I think I need some marketing strategy. <laughs> I'm going to call John. I mean, what, what, what I really sell is, um, I'm tired of overwhelm. You yeah. know, I'm tired of not knowing what works. I'm tired of every time the phone rings, people are asking for a deal. I'm tired of why my competitors show up in the Google three pack. Um, and, and I don't, um, yes. that's, those are the problems I solve. And by the way, I solve it with marketing strategy, but nobody yeah. wants marketing strategy. They want their problem solved. Yeah. Just solve my problem so I can focus on what I do best. Right. You know, let me stay in my genius zone so I don't have to yeah. deal with this other stuff. Yeah. And sometimes it's just simply a matter of anybody who can articulate the problem <laughs> that because a lot of times, you know, a lot of times people come to me and I and it's their problem that they say is I just want more customers. But what they really I mean, certainly they want more customers, but what their real challenge is, they just have no clarity about message. You know, they have no control of their marketing. They have no confidence on like, should I do this or should I do that? Yeah. We solve those things. We articulate that that's actually what you're feeling. Um, and that's what's partly leading you to not having enough customers. And all of a sudden it's like, I want to work with you. You get me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, it, and even if there's 10 people that can do the exact same thing, the person that can articulate it and, and have the right connection with the yeah. individual usually gets the, the opportunity it's to do this. Because the other nine are saying we're the biggest, longest running, oldest, most synergetic, you know, uh, solution. <laughs> for your problem and it's like well, what's my problem <laughs> <laughs> let's define the problem first <laughs> wendy says wendy says here uh she says in our business of the entertainment industry building audiences how as is now how, as much about how we deliver as now how much we inspire them to support each other any thoughts about building up customers that we never directly meet well, for, uh, you want to take that, Russ, or you want me to take on that? Go ahead, John. Yeah, I, I was going to say, why don't you ever meet them? Um, there's lots of ways to meet people today. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I, I mean, I have I have clients that I've had for years um, in other countries that I, I just I have not physically you know sat in a room with them. Um, but what one of the things that we do, and I I'm a big proponent of. I have a whole you know the the in step five, which is essentially about referrals in the book. Um, I I. You know, I, I list lots of ways for building community. Um, and one of the simplest ways is how can you bring them together? 
Could you bring your customers together um, that who have, in many cases, have a, have similar challenges, uh, similar problems that they're trying to uh, solve, even if they're in different industries? You know, yeah. if they if they're business owners, uh, uh, they they're going to have similar problems. Um, put together roundtables with with them and facilitate discussions uh, about you know, pick a topic. Here to this week or this month, we're going to talk about how you've addressed hiring. You know, whatever the topic yeah. might be, um, it doesn't have to be related to your products and services, by the way. Um, and and you know what you're going to do is is they're going to. I mean, I, I I have a network of consultants, and and you know we bring them together all the time. Community, I'm doing training all the time, and I will say that when we bring people together and. And no matter how many times I say something, if one of their peers actually says it too, it's like, oh, brilliant. Um, and so, you know, any of that that you can do uh, so, so that they realize I'm not alone. I have the same challenges. Oh, wait, this is how you challenged it. Or this is how you faced it. Why don't we get together and hold each other accountable uh, next yeah. week for, for solving that? I mean, it's, it's community building 101, but man, does it work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Wendy, she's in the film industry, so yeah. international film and TV audiences are hard to wrap our arms around. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think, I think still for myself, this is you know maybe the, maybe the person with the hammer is always looking for the nail. Yeah. Maybe it's just the idea of for me, it's community. Yeah. It's build a community around your subject, whatever subject that is. Build an audience around the idea and the and the. Um, effort that you're going through to solve a problem or announce a product or, you know, even a film, you know, you build a community that uh, allows you to get the buzz out there, make sure that people know about it, make sure that no more people know about it. And there's always this idea of viral and, uh, you know, which is very short term, you know, quick flash in the pan kind of thing. For small business owners, that's not necessarily where they want to go. They want to go consistent. I want the that's same true. business. Because if you all of a sudden had 150 new business owners or uh, customers next week in your business, some businesses wouldn't survive that. So yeah. we got to be cautious about what we do. You, you know, there's there's another one final point on the whole community thing. It just makes your customers so much stickier. I mean, we have, uh, uh, you know, my network of consultants. I mean, basically, I in the first year, we train them everything I know, you know, we give them all the systems, you know, we give them all the tools, but they stick around for nine, 10 years now because they get so connected to each other. I mean, they definitely stay for the people. And I think there's an element of that to, um, in any, any way that you can bring people together. Yeah. I, I, I love that idea. I, I have been focusing recently on lead generation mm. because so many times, and I'm sure that it's one of the steps in your book, mm. um, I think you just mentioned step five is yeah. it's really okay. about referrals and community. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the idea I'm a fan of video, of course. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've been in different areas of marketing and podcasting and media and content creation uh, primarily. And it's really, it's really evolved and continued to expand. And I think if you just focus on a couple of key elements, that's where you can really shine and, and niche down and, and provide the best possible outcome for for business owners and, and like you said it's all in the way that you solve their problem yep. and communicate what the problem actually is and, and, and keep them. talking to them you know a couple of the ways that that we find i mean I, I i've done dozens of of really solid core message strategies with clients by by interviewing their clients because they know the problem you solve more than you know probably um, yeah. and in fact uh, another uh, thing that we do now rely heavily on the last 5 years or so it's become a great resource is is google reviews if you're one of those businesses and pretty much every industry is today that is getting or or should be getting uh, reviews a lot of times the actual content the actual words, your happy customers that are leaving five-star reviews, in many cases voluntarily, mm -hmm. um, add, add to Google. Sometimes there's some great phrases in there that, that you should be using, if not for your core message. I, I would contend that it should be above the fold. You know, we show up when we say we're going to, we clean up the job site, you know, every time. Yeah. That kind of stuff should be on your website above the fold. 
but they're also going to start articulating what they got that they didn't get other places. And those can be great email subject lines. They can be great blog post topics. Um, so really mind those reviews and, and make it a habit of talking to your customers, asking them what, what, they, what you do that others uh, don't do. And, and don't let them stop it. You provide good service because that doesn't add much value. Uh, ask them to tell you time when you provided good stories, a story. Testimonials about, you know, are always handy. Yeah. A story about what good service looks like to them. I mean, and, and listen uh, intently for those kind of emotional words that, that come up. That's what you should be. Uh, that's what you should be communicating to those people who first meet you. Mm. Well, I'm going through that process right now. I'm developing a program, John, that uh, I want to help more business owners make better connections with using video. Mm. And so going through that and articulating what the problem is, because yep. not everybody sees it as a problem, uh, you know, and articulating and defining what problem I'm solving or yep. helping them solve and generating a process and a, and a system. Cause I'm, I love systems as well. I'm, I'm yeah. right there with you. It's yeah, and, not a, it's not an easy process. No, it's, it's not. not. And sometimes we get very focused on, we know the benefits of this. And so we're selling like, here's what this will do for you. Um, you know, which is, is human nature uh, uh -huh. for anything, especially something we've developed with our, you know, a program. I mean, hours, years, you know, of, of putting yourself into that kind of thing. Um, and what you have to do is, is, you know, what's the problem people have with the networking, with, with connecting with, you know, what's that costing them, those kinds of things. And then, you can find a way to slide your solution into solving that problem as opposed to making the assumption about, well, of course, this is great. Everybody needs video because of blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> they're not listening, right? I mean, at that point. It's like, <laughs> out of the car. Yeah. So, John, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. I, I just want to make sure that people know how to connect and, sure. and receive your information. Yeah. Your book is going to be out, out in September. So, go out and uh, pre-order yeah. where's the best place that they can connect with you and so, how do you like people? To yeah. Connect? So if you don't mind, I'll, I'll also, if, if, since you ask people to pre-order, I'll give them an incentive for doing so. I've created a free companion course. So it's six videos and worksheets that actually go along with the book. So even prior to getting the book, <laughs> you can actually start doing, uh, doing some work. And if you pre-order the book, um, so obviously before September, um, you can get that companion course uh, for free right away. So, uh, to do that, uh, just go to the ultimate marketing engine.com slash uh, course, and it'll give you instructions on, on how to pre-order, but then also how to come back and, and, and claim and enroll in your uh, free course, uh, as well. But if you just want to find out what I'm doing, I have a podcast, you know, newsletter, lots of blog posts. Um, it's just duct tape marketing.com and that's D U C T. T A P E marketing.com. That's awesome. Thank you so much for, thanks for joining us. And I, I love the idea that we can talk about, we could talk about this all day, John. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. a nerd out on marketing, but uh, I know that you, you have things to do and hopefully you'll get on a bike this weekend and, and do I, I, I actually, uh, I actually am going fishing uh, tomorrow. Um, you know, fly fishing is another bad habit I've picked up uh, <laughs> since moving to Colorado. Um, and uh, so Probably a bike ride Sunday or Monday for sure. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. If you found this content, at least a slice of it valuable, please like, comment, share, subscribe to YouTube or any other social media that you're on. And also share the podcast out. This is a valuable piece of information. John shares nuggets of knowledge. His book is coming out. We want to put a lot of effort into uh, supporting John and the pirates here in the community. And as always, we do this because kindness is cool. Smiles are free. And we want you to enjoy the day. Take care. Don't go away. Thank you for joining the Pirate Broadcast. If you found this content valuable, please like, comment, and share it across your social media channels. I would love the opportunity to help others grow in their business. The Pirate Syndicate is a platform where you show up, we produce the show. It's that easy. If you want to be seen, be heard, and be talked about, join the Pirate Syndicate.